Morris, Maya, are you here? So we have a quick presentation, a five minute quick presentation by a group of Beninese who have been working in the poultry industry. I'm going to invite them. I'm going to invite them to share their project very briefly. Tomorrow is mine. Please, a round of applause. Tomorrow is mine. My name is Jerry, and I'm going to present our project. The name is Tomorrow is mine. And then, production of poultry. This is the a, a, a hand. We call our product Goliath. This is one of uh, it can reach 22 pounds. This is another end, an ordinary color. This is 10 pounds. So this is the brief carrier of how we begin. This, we start in 2002. We start with a formation in Sunday Center, in somewhere in Portnovo. And we continue in 2003. We begin with an installation of farmer to begin an experimental work in breeding and production of poultry. So, in 2004, from 2004 to 2007, we begin with artificial incubator. In 2014, we begin with the fabrication of incubator locally. It means that we do artificial incubator in here to be need. So we have a vision. Our vision is to reach over 20,000 20, people. Uh, 20,000 people who can I mean to the business? Yes, yes to the business. This is one of the initiators of the project. His name is Abdul Age. So the, one of the particular things of our project is a network. We have a network and we have many producers. I mean they have, we, we, we give them chicken, little chicken of one day and they raise them till some some I mean three and four months and we buy them back. So it's a big network with many producers all around the country. So we also do training and formation and after people get certificate that I will, we will show the picture just further. So our vision is in 2025 20, is to be a big leader of production of in the domain of breeding and production of poultry. So this is how we do the production. For for beginning, we just do selection of the Goliath because it's a particular hen because it can reach a very big, big, uh, size. very big size. So it's very important to for the selection. This is one of this is the, the mayor of Guaycon. It's some place where we have delivered some certificate to our students that come and learn how to do the breeding. So this is some of the one that gets certificate in 2017. So this is inside incubator. This is the egg. This is the first incubator that we made in here. It used paraffin oil. This is the new incubator that we use in here. This is electric. And this is, it can contain 1,300 1, eggs to 10,000 eggs. Mm -hmm. And we do it in here. If we made it ourselves. Yes, we made it in here. This is uh, chicken. After hatching, the chicken is just getting out. This is a two-week chicken. This is a feed box. We just do it to increase the, the raising of the chicken. It's very important because when we put the chicken in here, he, he raises very quick. And we call it feed box. 
it's, it's very important in matter of space. You can put it in everywhere, just a little place like this. You just put something down and put it in. You can even put it on the top of the house. And it's very, very important because it's simple. This is the chicken inside the big box. And this is one of one of the goyats. See? As you can see, it's very big and impressive. So that is the final product. We have specified in smoked chicken. That is it. After all the transformation, that is what we get. So this is the different phases of the project and our vision for the project. This is the end of the vision of the project. We want to reach till 2024, 1,000 of chickens per month. So, that is the project in summer. In summer. So, actually, we are in the south of Benin. We are trying to build a team. So, actually, if there are some number of our staff that are in north. Nous avons formé plus de 70 personnes les, les semaines qui sont passées là et que nous sommes en train d'installer. Last week, so, some of our students got certificates and we're just installing them in north. And Donc c'est pourquoi l'initiateur du projet n'est même pas avec nous ici là parce qu'ils sont sur le terrain en train de travailler. That is why one of the initiators of the project is not already here and just here to just here. Voilà en gros le projet. Nous vous remercions de l'attention. Et nous vous soumettons à vous s'il y a des questions particulières à poser. So we're at the end of the project and I hope you just like it and your questions are welcome. Now so we're going to hear the next project from, from Tyler and Chase. Take it away. Hello everyone. Thank you for allowing us to be here and to present to you. My name is Chase Kaverzaki. My name is Tyler. We'll get started. So the problem is that Benin imported 100% of their electricity in 2017, and it cost them over 183 million US dollars. Access to electricity is limited. Only 41.4% of Beninese residents have access to reliable electricity. In rural areas, only 9% of people have access to electricity. Benin needs a reliable energy source in order to be able to increase their development and allow their citizens to focus their time on other tasks. We believe that the solution for the problem is renewable energy. The renewable energy that we're looking at is hydroelectricity. Our micro hydro power stations that we did research on involve different components. Part of that component is starting with diversion or intake. We would not dam the whole entire river or stream or spring that we're taking the water from, but we'd only do a certain portion of it, enough to start the penstock where or the pipeline for the water to run, but we would during construction phase not have the water running down that, we would have it being built. And then with the turbine, based on the amount of head and flow of the river and the size or of stream, we will gauge what type of turbine system we are going to use for that certain location. From there, an option if the, system, if the river or stream is too far away from where we want the electricity or the power to go to, there is the option for rechargeable batteries or rechargeable energy station. So that way that is by the river and then you can use that to bring to where you want the power to be and then swap back and forth with that. And you can have a dump load system to absorb the surplus energy so that way energy is not being wasted but being stored and built up. If the river or stream is not able to be able to have enough head or flow for that, 
we can use something called a hydram. It's used a lot in agriculture and irrigation, but what it does is it boosts the pressure from the water. So we would have that boost before it hits the turbine in order to increase the power of the production so that way it is able to sustain our micro hydro electric station. Um, we're still currently doing our research and there is a company in Kenya called Appropriate Technologies that is currently using this system along with other countries in Eastern and Central Africa that are using this. And even possibly here, um, we just learned about how there is possible ongoing projects here on when we came here on Monday. So we kind of have built a five-step plan that outlines the entire process of how we would install one of these micro hydro stations. So step one would be to identify potential locations and location scout based on where electricity is needed and also access to a river. And we do realize that there, we just learned that there is eight possible micro locations already kind of maybe located here in Benin, so we start with those first. Then we would hold a village meeting to talk about the project and ensure that everyone involved knew what was going on. From there we would begin construction. As Tyler mentioned, we would dam only part of the river. Uh, sometimes when you build a hydroelectricity station, you have to dam the whole river, which can disturb wildlife or the flow of water for people downstream that rely on the water. So we hope to dam only part of it where we need to divert the water for our pin stock. Then we would finalize the construction and finally hand over the hydro station to the residents in the village. And we would involve the residents of the village in the construction process so that they can do ongoing maintenance and make sure that the station continually runs even when we're not there with them. Just to stress the importance of that, so that way, once we are done with the project, the locals are able to maintain their projects and gain the knowledge on it, because this is all about having the local community involved. This is a very fuzzy Gantt chart of our process, but we imagine the whole process to install one from start to finish to take about two years, but we know that this will adapt over time as we gain more experience. So the first three months will be spent consulting with engineering professionals and the local community in order to design a system that works. Then the next two months would be ordering the parts necessary from our suppliers. Two more months would be involved in getting those parts delivered to our site. After all the parts are delivered, we start construction, which is listed here as 16 months. And then for six months, we would do ongoing training and uh, other necessary finalizations before handing over the project. And if this were a little bit clearer, we'd be able to see that some of those steps overlap. So if in some months, we're ordering parts, but also receiving them. So it's not a full four months for that process. That first initial phase is important. Once we have the locations picked out, and once we've consulted, that's when we secure the funding within the first three months. In order to go to funding sources, we need to have those strategic locations picked out so that way we have material to be able to present. So, yeah. And for our funding, um, we looked at some potential funders, partnering with the Power Africa Initiative, um, getting funding from the Beninese government, philanthropists and donors within the U.S., as long with, along with other projects that might be ongoing, we may be able to partner, and international aid organizations. Based on the size of the project and how much money is needed for that location, if it's a larger scale micro hydro station compared to a smaller one, we reach out to certain yeah. different organizations. Yeah. Um, at this time, we'd be happy to take any questions that you might have and be able to answer them. Hi, I'm Michaela. I'm Jace. I'm Tony. Um, and so, our idea is resource redistribution between farmers and um, people in more urban areas. We came up with this idea because in doing our research, we found that 
one third of calories get lost or wasted a year that are produced. Um, and then 40% of the losses be come because of harvest loss. Um, can you stop According to the FAO, 450 million people in Africa are left unconnected due to lack of infrastructure and access to markets. Um, and that's part of the reason why so much food gets wasted. You can go ahead. Um, zero food waste and zero poverty is a part of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which Benin is a part of that consortium. So the Benin government government signed um, or was part of a coalition that decided to help reach these goals and we're focusing on the increasing infrastructure and access to markets. Okay. So our idea that we came up with was to create a, like a redistribution service so we're going to start off by kind of surveying the farmers and surveying like the ranchers and the consumers to see what, for, like for example, for the farmers to see what products they produce and for the consumers what products they want. That way we can kind of transport them to different areas where they are lacking. So for example, if there's a farmer who is producing a lot of tropical fruits and is lacking peppers and maize, we can create that connection to transport the produce that they're producing, as well as stopping in cities to sell those produce as well, sell that produce as well. Um, and like when we go to the farmers and once we create kind of a connection and a contract, we will actually buy all of their products that they are wanting to sell up front. So we will do a hand-for-hand -hand exchange money and produce. <coughs> So there won't be any worry on the farmers whether or not their products will be sold because that worry will be put on us, whether or not the products get sold. Um, we kind of want to do that because a lot of farmers um, don't have the technology or the resources to transport their produce to different areas. So by us extending our help, we are able to kind of widen their market to produce more sales for them. So the more people that are buying their our product, their product through us, the more money they're going to be making, and the more we're going to be able to help kind of distribute those products. And with distributing them, we're going to be using food trucks. That way, they can be safely transported, and we won't lose a lot of products due to mishandling food, so they don't spoil. So we just want to sell. Um, we just want to buy those products to kind of, like I said, widen the market for the farmers as well as giving you guys who don't have, you may not have a certain produce in your area that other farmers might sell. As well as we'll take items like salt or um, like textiles, like woven items to rural areas where they don't have those technical processes or artisans. Bring maize to the other location, if 
that makes sense. Um, so to do this, we're going to work with grassroots organizations, research stations, universities around the area to kind of figure out uh, what the infrastructure is like, what um, is needed, what's not needed, and also work with the farmers and consumers, as we said before. Uh, this is going to help help the communication between the markets and the farmers. Um, also, we're going to try to get funding from the United Nations, USAID, and development agencies to kind of get us to be able to sell the products at a higher, or, uh, sell the products for profit, but also uh, buy the products from the, uh, from the farmers. So hopefully through this we can um, connect that link between the farmers and the markets and um, kind of get a better communication between the two. Yeah, so like with the surveying that I brought up earlier, we, we want to be on the ground, face to face, talking to the farmers and talking to the consumers mm -hmm. instead of just assuming that you guys need this product when in reality you need the other one. So by coming face to face, like and if you were paying attention to Chase and Tyler's, it says that only 9% of rural communities um, have power or have um, oh, yeah electricity. So like with that, if we were to create like an online survey, they wouldn't be able to fill that out because they don't have access to Wi-Fi, which we need electricity for. So by going, we're going to be going face to face, giving out those surveys as well as implementing like an online service as well for those that do have access to Wi-Fi or online services. That way we can reach different markets and different consumer points that way we're not leaving anyone out and we're giving everyone the opportunity to use our service and then it was also brought up um, when we were here last time about creating some sort of app that could use so like with our trucks once we have a produce that we're ready to sell and we go to a point in the city we are wanting to be able to send out like a notification to everyone that we stopped at this point and that we're selling these products that way they don't have to waste our time coming to us looking for a product that we don't have, don't know what we have, and they'll be able to know when and where we'll be at all times. Bonjour tout le monde. Bonjour. Uh, my name is uh, Ezekiel Kofi. Uh, I study in uh, Economy and Finance Management. I studying uh, to, I starting uh, my master in uh, Statistics and Evaluation. I will continue to my presentation in French because it will be better. <laughs> uh, Hope very soon I will be able to have a best presentation in English. So, mon projet est appelé projet Zobin. Zobin qui veut dire lumière. Zobin est un mot fond. I've been trying to remember English, it's not good, but I, I tried my best. So he said he will present you the project, the name of the project is Zombo, uh, and it font, it means... Lumière, light. Light. Ah, ok. Pourquoi ce projet? Au Bénin, vous allez dans les villes comme Cotonou, Paracou, Porte Nouveau, le niveau d'électrification, Ce n'est pas mal, c'est plus ou moins bien, tout au moins au niveau domestique. Ok, so, he said in Benin, in Cotonou, Porto Novo, like all the big city, the access to electricity is quite good, like uh, in Porto yeah. uh, just on the house, maybe not outside, but on the house they have electricity. Mais de la même manière, vous faites un tour à 60 km juste après Ouida. Vous avez des problèmes dans le ménage. Je... He said not so far from here, just uh, after Vida, uh, there is no electricity in the house. <coughs> Et c'est c'est encore plus criard dans les villes. Donc c'est un projet sur l'électrification rurale. Okay, so this is uh, why they are making a project around the rural electrification. Et donc ce projet tient en compte. Les, les communautés rurales et en même temps prend en compte les énergies renouvelables. Ok, so this project is for the rural population and also in and uh, énergie renouvelable. Et, et donc euh, nous visons 
principalement comme objectif à travers ce projet-là, à contribuer au développement durable en apportant de l'énergie aux populations rurales. Okay, they, they all, by this project, contribute to alors, d'emblée, ce n'était pas un projet business, c'est beaucoup plus un projet social dans, à, au début. Et, mais quand je rencontre des partenaires, je rencontre des gens avec qui j'échange, ils trouvent que pour ce coût du projet, c'est très grand comme coût pour que que ça soit un projet social, mais que ça doit être un projet business. Alors actuellement, j'essaie de transformer ça en projet business, sans pour autant empiéter sur mon idée principale. Ok, so the price of the project is really high, so we are talking about uh, with the partner, and they said it's maybe too expensive for a social project, so he is turning it to business project, to, and he is trying to keep like the social vision also. Alors, le projet, le, le projet, euh, ça c'est en français, pas total cost of the project. Euh, 16 milliards, pas 16 millions. Euh, yes, 18 milliards. 18 milliards, je ne sais pas. Euh, en dollars, ça fait au plus de 30 millions de dollars. Donc, euh, 30 millions de dollars. Alors, le projet est simple. Le projet est simple. Au Bénin, et le projet est simple. Vous aurez dans chaque communauté, dans chaque village, nous avons ciblé 80 villages dans le nord du pays. Okay. He said that the project is simple. They already uh, choose 80 villages in the north of the country. Pourquoi le nord du pays? Je vais vous expliquer pourquoi le nord du pays. Ça, par exemple, ce sont des données statistiques du projet Millennium Challenge Account Bénin sur l'électrification au Bénin. Okay, euh, ce sont des statistiques. This is statistical data from Millennium Project in Bénin. Et du ministère de l'énergie. Euh, bon, là, par exemple, ça montre le taux de couverture nationale. Vous avez dans les villes plus de 65% de taux de couverture dans les départements comme le littoral, l'Omé, l'Atlantique. Donc, c'est le pourcentage. Le pourcentage, voilà, le pourcentage. Le pourcentage, le pourcentage. Le Le pourcentage, le pourcentage. Le pourcentage, le pourcentage. Le pourcentage, le pourcentage. Le pourcentage, alors, et donc, c'est pour ça que nous avons choisi. Et quand on prend en compte un autre paramètre, vous allez voir que ce n'est plus seulement le département de l'Atacora qui entre en jeu, mais ce sont les départements de l'Atacora et du et de et de et, du, et de la Liborie. Et donc, nous avons choisi ces deux départements-là et nous choisissons 40 villages, 40 villages par département. Et donc, nous avons 80 villages sur les deux départements. So they choose two departments in the north and they have uh, 40 villages in each department. Et au niveau de ces villages, nous avons fait des études qui nous permettent de distinguer trois classes de ménages. Trois classes de ménages. They said they make study in this uh, department and they can and now they have three category of uh, family. Three class, la class uh, la plus haute, la classe moyenne et la classe la plus faible. Uh, upper class, upper class, upper class and middle class. And uh, class. Et donc nous avons essayé d'estimer les besoins en énergie domestique de chaque classe. Et donc, euh, ça, ce sont des tableaux techniques qui nous permettent d'estimer. Et donc, vous allez voir que pour la classe 1, 
pour ils ont besoin d'environ 288 kWh par an et pour la classe 2, 561,6 kWh par an et pour la classe 3, ça fait 767,68 classes par an et kWh par an. Nous avions d'abord pris en compte les besoins de base en termes d'électricité, la lumière pour pouvoir étudier, euh, de l'électricité pour pouvoir charger les téléphones portables. Mais en même temps, on a estimé que, au fur et à mesure que les, les agents économiques auront de l'électricité, leur consommation va tendre à augmenter d'une moyenne de 3% par an. Okay. So, uh, they... Can see like three category and the conservation category. They just think uh, is, this is estimation is just for one plug, charge phone, and one light. So, but the consumption will be increased for around three percent. Three percent, two. Par an, each year. Yeah. So the consumption will increase. Et donc, nous avions pris en compte cette cette variable, cette variation. Wow. So they took this, uh, uh, par ménage. Et donc l'idée c'est d'offrir un, un kit solaire à chaque ménage. Et donc on leur, on leur offre ça hmm? et les ménages s'engagent avec euh, à la signature de contrat ils vont payer un forfait qui va varier de 5000 francs à 10 000 francs selon la classe des ménages. Donc, ils vont donner à cette maison, à cette solaire système. Et quand ils donnent à cette maison, la maison va payer 50 dollars. 5 000, ça fait 10 dollars environ. Oui, environ 10 dollars ou 20 dollars. Oui, 20 dollars chaque mois. Et donc, ils vont, ils vont payer ça pour pouvoir accepter et on leur installe le kit. Dès qu'on finit de leur installer le kit, ils vont maintenant, et pour chaque kit, il faut renouveler la batterie chaque 7 ans. Et donc, ce ne serait plus nous qui allons leur offrir le, le, la batterie maintenant, eux, ils vont travailler à ce que chaque 7 ans, ils puissent renouveler la batterie. Et ils vont continuer à payer chaque, un abonnement par mois Non, non, non. 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 On paye une seule fois. Et les autres fois. Euh, en fait, les bailleurs financent une partie du kit. Et la partie qui doit être financée par euh, les, populations. les populations ne doit pas être donnée sous forme d'argent comptant. Mais on va les organiser à travailler sur des terrains donnés et le fruit de leur travail contribuera à payer donc leur partie de contribution. Ok. So, uh... It's like this solar home system is donation. So they will give to the family the solar home system. The family will pay just one time. I don't understand at the first. It's just one time they will pay 10 or 20 euro. And after uh, after seven years, they have to change the battery. So now the, the population is autonome with the, with the solar home system. So they don't. Maintenant, en fait, pour, pour que dans sept ans, ils ne soient pas surpris, mm -hmm. on les organise en coopération. Dès qu'ils ont le kit. On les organise en coopération et il y a un contrat bien défini. Ils peuvent décider, par exemple, d'aller produire selon la richesse de la terre dans leur région. Ça peut être du cadeau, du maïs, etc., etc. Ils produisent, ils mettent à, à disposition et puis nous, on vend ça, on dépose l'argent dans un compte bancaire pour leur préparer le kit pour que dans sept ans, lorsque la batterie aura expiré, on puisse leur fournir de la batterie. Chaque Vous les aider à vendre Hein Ils vous donnent à vous le maïs On, on les aide à vendre, vendre le maïs. On, on, les on, les aide, on les accompagne dans la vente. Ok. So, uh, they create a community to, have to, to keep the money for uh, changing the battery after seven years. So, and this community, they will help them to keep the money Uh, by selling their uh, agriculture tank, they help them to sell and they help them to build cooperative. Someone mm -hmm. cooperative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to create cooperative and keep this uh, fund for all the houses. Is that right? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. And so, voilà, en, en gros, l'idée du projet. Et 
Nous avions voulu vraiment le faire et je peux vous déjà parler au niveau du planning. So this is estimate idea of project that we'll show you the planning. Donc c'est par exemple sur trois ans. Trois ans dans la phase d'exécution. La première phase c'est la démarche administrative. Et il faut dire qu'aujourd'hui, à ce niveau, nous avons beaucoup avancé. D'ici peu, nous allons, par la grâce de Dieu, rencontrer le ministre de Naoussou. L'audience est en cours. Et donc, les démarches administratives évoluent très bien à ce niveau-là. Et après ça, nous allons aller prendre contact avec les communautés rurales. Ok. La première chose est administrative, stuff, so they now uh work on it and they also have a meeting with the, the Ministry of Energy and Energy, Energy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so and after this they will meet the, the local population. And they also start to work on funding by talking with the bank like BOID. Yeah. West Africa Bank of Development. Okay. And don't euh, le, le second niveau sera de rencontrer les populations à la base, leur expliquer et obtenir leur adhésion. Parce que c'est important. Dès qu'ils ne sont pas avec nous, ça ne peut pas aller. Ok, le second step est de parler avec la population pour expliquer le projet et avoir le papier et la signature de la personne. Et puis, avant ça, nous allons et, signer des contrats formels avec eux. Oui, donc ils vont faire des contrats avec la population après, nous allons leur euh, fournir les kits solaires. So they, after they will give them the solar system. Et en même temps, on, est, euh, on, on installe les coopérations et on suit le travail en coopération. Voilà en gros euh, le projet. Voilà en gros euh, le projet tel qu'il est. Donc, euh, le, la particularité du projet, tel que mon ami vient de le présenter, c'est que nous allons disposer les kits aux populations sans pour autant qu'ils ne déboursent assez d'argent. Mais c'est de les organiser à travailler en coopérative pour que euh, le fruit en fait, de leur travail puisse aider à la contribution de leur partie de kit. Ok. Uh, so... Summarize, summarize the project, and he said uh, he will help. The main thing is not to take too much money from the population, but to organize the population in co cooperative and help them. This is the big part of the project. Wow. <laughs> uh, I am Cheyenne. And uh, my business is called Uziano. Uh, it's connection in Swahili. Uh, so I want to start by telling an African folk tale that I read. It's about a man who's from a desert, and he's walking along the ocean, and he sees a fish. But since he's from the desert, he didn't know that the fish needed the water to live. So he picked up the fish and put it in his pocket. He started walking, and later he checked his pocket, and the fish was dead. Sometimes international aid looks a lot like that, right? We, organizations come in that don't really understand a problem and they try to solve it, but consequently they do more harm than good if they are making assumptions and not understanding everything that's happening in a culture or a community. So I've kind of outlined the way that international development usually works. Uh, countries from the global north take their own ideas and their own money and plant projects and ideas in developing countries of the global south. You can go next week. So what I want our what our approach would be is to take a community and empower and engage the ideas that the community members are having from the problems that the community members are experiencing. Sorry. Yep, sorry. <laughs> so the way that we plan to do this is by taking a small percentage of the budget of large international aid organizations and take that budget to employ people on the ground in the communities that these organizations were already serving. Do I need to slow down? Yes. Yes, slow down? Um, so then these employees that we would be hiring from the international aids budget would be collecting data and collecting ideas about 
what the communities see as problems and what the communities have ideas for to fix their own problems. And then they would send that data and the employees that we are hiring back to us and we would aggregate and analyze the data, put it on a report, and send it back to the international aid organizations. So really what the international aid organizations are doing is paying for data. Um, a lot of times in international aid, we make well-intentioned decisions, and Uziano allows these organizations to make well-informed decisions instead of intentioned. Uh, we call this data-driven human-based design. So in short, we collect community-based solutions from the community members, from community-based employees. So the employees that we'd be hiring are people who are invested in the future of these communities already. Um, and the first thing you learn in entrepreneurship is don't solve a problem you don't understand. But when we're solving problems for communities that we've never been to, that's really hard. So there's benefits for both the community that uh, Uziano is president and the NGOs that they're, sent, they're um, serving. So some of the community benefits would be that the solutions are personal. It helps take away generalizations and assumptions that are really easy to make when you don't understand a problem. Uh, the solutions are empowering, mostly because they're solutions that the community members have thought of. And jobs are created, so we won't um, pay money to fly people in to collect data or understand a problem. We'll just communicate with people already on the ground. Um, and the NGO benefits is they're making data-driven decisions instead of well-intentioned decisions. Um, financial aid is no longer wasted, so we break this down um, for aid in Kenya later on. And uh, we would only need 0.03% of their entire budget for USAID in Kenya to employ, employ 54 people on a 10,000 a year salary, USD, and that's part time. Um, and so at, once we scale, uh, Uziano could be like a stamp of approval for an NGO. Like they went through Uziano, their data's legit, so we should use this company or donate to this company. Yeah, next one. Okay, so uh, this is for uh, uh, this it comes from USAID. So this is all of the money that goes into Africa on an annual basis, 162 million. So if you take 0.3% of that, you get 500,000 or 50,000 dollars salaries for 10,000 employees, uh, which would be impacting 10,000 communities. Um, so I have some more data uh, past these slides. So hopefully that'll help me answer questions. And uh, if you have feedback, I'd love feedback too. And I'll turn you away. All right.